Here we are at Claymine Trails. If you listen really closely, you can hear the herons in the background. There's about three or four nests and we've been watching them um, very sneakily because we want to be as far away as possible. We're not on the, one of the trails is closed off so that people can't get too close. And uh, because uh, they're so precious. I think you can hear the babies calling for some food. <laughs> and we are fighting mosquitoes and I have my trusty bear spray. We did see some bear scat on the trail, so we're being very careful and uh, trying to get as many shots of the herons as possible without disturbing them. So a fun place to be and a beautiful day. We're so lucky. Hi everyone, welcome to my Shoreline studio. I'm Sybil Muschik and behind the camera as usual is Joshua Blanc, also known as the Manitou for the beautiful music he writes for us. Now we are going to be working with uh, the clay mine footage. Uh, we went to this wonderful park. It is also a wheelchair access park. The park is full of nature things and particularly herons. It's a nesting ground for herons. That area is closed off to the public. But if you're careful, you can get a view of the nests. And uh, it's just amazing to see the little, well, they're not little, the babies are <laughs> monstrous, sitting at the edge of their, or hanging on for dear life at the edge of their uh, nests. And uh, of course, we've filmed them and uh, a little bit of that's going to be in the work today. But our concern today is the field across from the park. It used to be just a clear cut and is now overgrown with beautiful wildflowers. The mountains in the background, it's a great scene. And of course, the herons fly over that field to go uh, to the nest. So we're going to try and capture that today, uh, both in gel printing and a little bit of um, a graphite uh, pencil uh, uh, transfer. And it's basically a water basis, so it's almost like a watercolor, but we're using our distress crayons. <laughs> we always have one little moment here. So I just want to show you um, the crayons. They sort of uh, roll out from the bottom. And if you spray a little water, you can activate them and activate the color. And that's how we're going to be working today. If Don't press too hard because um, this sort of breaks up. So, And that's going to be some parts of the mountains. I'm going to make the sky a different color. So let's get started. So I have the view of the, the field, all the beautiful wildflowers. Unfortunately, the red flowers are hawkweed, which is a major pest in the area, even though they're lovely. And um, we have paintbrush and um, arnica, the yellow is probably arnica, and dandelion. I'm not sure, I think it's broom or something like that, uh, or uh, what the violet is. Um, it's too early for the fireweed, so we'll see maybe what do you think it is, Josh? I think those are grasses, actually. With purple, yeah. with purple seeds on the top. Okay, that makes sense. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to start out, um, let's see, let's start out with the sky color. And we'll use some of the blue and some of the violet. And I'm actually going to use a brush for that. Well, we had an exciting moment. Uh, we started already and we had to quit because a deer came uh, right to the studio door. And of course we had to take some quick shots and we'll see if we can get that into the video. His uh, little buck has been hanging around and uh, I have Bobex My Garden, which is a kind of a spray that you put against deer because he also enjoys all my vegetables. So but right now he's, I don't know what he's eating out there, clover, I guess, and whatever grass we have in the front lawn. 
so let's get back at it. Okay, so we're activating our distress crayon here. Uh, and we're just going to put some color on the top. And I'm just adding a little bit more water. And that's going to be our sky color. And we're going to just add a little bit of the violet to that. If you use it too wet, it beads up on you, so uh, it's better to do it this way. Okay, so I'm going to outline our uh, mountainous area a bit and just get the contour here. There's a little bump here. I'll put that in. Probably not going to get the whole that's Dragon Mountain in the background. If you ever come to Quinell, it's quite a prominent feature. And it just sort of tapers off. So doing it a bit negatively here. So you could add a little bit of water, just be careful. Um, I'm just going to and maybe take a brush to it lightly. I don't want it beading on me, but you just want to smooth out areas. That works pretty good. A little bit more of the violet here. Okay. Now we'll add a little bit of green uh, turquoise peacock feathers, it's called. So it's in here between the blue and the green. just to give the mountains a different color. And there is, I'm going to pick out uh, negatively that little um, formation in here that uh, is just way in the background. But let's try and get this area. I'm going to ignore the sort of um, far middle ground. Just uh, for the interest of speed and also composition. And moving it into the green slightly. Just a little bit of that. And then uh, we're going to make that blue in the background just a little bit darker and more violet on the mountain. That gives it uh, that aerial perspective that we want. The distant hills are. more, have more air in the way, and therefore they're grayer, bluer. And with artistic license, of course, uh, we can make them quite violet for emphasis and visual interest. And you can give it some interesting contours. There you go. And we can probably wipe away 
a little bit of that background range that's in here, which is kind of fun. Okay, put that way in the background. Pump up that um, forward range a bit. Just give it almost an outline. Just have to watch that you don't get some of this broken color. That can be picked out later. There we go. So these are very interesting and fun to work with. And you can get as um, Van Goghish as you like with circles and whirls and so forth. <laughs> now the next part I'm actually going to do in, uh, and I'm going to just spray this ever so slightly. And then I don't want a lot of water. And I'm going to activate my um, graphite pencil. Uh, this is a sketch and wash, uh, general sketch and wash. So it actually works a little bit uh, like my distress crayons. But it gives you structure. So we want a fair amount of structure here. So we're going to put some funky trees in. Lots of them. So maybe Josh can put some music in here. We're just going to put trees in. <laughs> so lots of trees. These trees are predominantly spruce. Uh, the trees that the herons like actually are the spruce trees and qu quite a bit of, um, no, it looks like pine trees. I don't know if there's a lot of pine trees left, but there's some that survived the beetle kill. And now the, I think the spruces are in trouble too. So it sort of ebbs and flows. Sometimes there's pine beetles, sometimes there's spruce beetles, sometimes there's years where nothing is happening. Um, with climate change, of course, things have gotten a little more extreme. We don't have the cold winters anymore uh, that kill these beetles. Um, we used to have minus 40 Celsius. Uh, sometimes for a couple of weeks in February, and we, we never get that kind of weather anymore. Okay, I think we have just about done the trees in. So now we're on to the green part. I might add some greens into the trees later, but we'll see about that. So we're going to mix here. So the colors mix really well, not a problem. I want them to be a little bit more and I might just add a little bit of spray again. Don't want to saturate your plate, but just want things to roll fairly smoothly without beading. But once you start working with these, um, you'll be able to judge pretty fast uh, what makes how much water makes it bead and how much you can still work with. So that's the background grasses. It's basically just a color tone. And then we start getting into, um, I'm just going to do these ridges here and there, and we'll put the color in between. And these are a lot of fun to work with. And you do get, you know, the printerly result, that painterly, printerly uh, result that we all love, of course. 
and there's sort of these what are those Josh anyway that do you remember <laughs> I can't tell. <laughs> I can't tell. Large leaves, anyway. Um, it might be burdock. They have large leaves. That uh, We do have burdock growing in the area. And they're quite invasive. And, of course, the cattle hate them. And they stick in their fur. And then another ridge here. And probably here at the bottom. Okay, this will be our violet area. I might just wipe a little bit more back here. So you can play with this, wipe it and design it the way you want. Maybe a little group of flowers there. So have a look and then adjust as necessary. So we created a nice violet there with the blue. Just add some more. The uh, turquoise blue, of course, makes another nice violet. So that's our little grasses in here. It'll be subtle but interesting. So now as far as marks are concerned, um, you know, check things out. What works? You can do daubing. You can do line work. You can use the side, an end daub. You know, there's all sorts of possibilities here for mark making. Okay, so that's that. And we'll restrict the reds to there. Now some yellow. I might just add a little bit of that into this to make it darker. This is our, um, what is this one? Um, spiced marmalade, like that. <laughs> well, it is as luscious as it sounds. So that's back in here. Okay. Now, as you go further back, it's less distinct, right? So we're not going to have those large movements of individual flowers, it's going to be just more masses of color. So more line work here. And maybe against the... the violet, which is a nice contrast. A good transition and also a compositional element here. We can, you're sort of echoing the two shapes. And these ones can have quite a bit of structure because they're close flowers. Okay. We'll put all the lids on after. <clears throat> yellow. Lots of yellow. The Arnica, I think the Arnica doesn't grow in here, but the... I spoke of yellow oak weed in there. Yeah, that's what I think too. The Arnica tends to grow uh, more in the park where it's shaded. And um, even though it's a sunflower type, uh, I think it likes more of the cooler, denser forest, some more fragile flower. Some down in here.
and maybe another touch of violet on the side here. Maybe a little lighter. And then in between we'll have that crazy red of the hawkweed, which is like a cad red, um, medium to, to light. Now obviously at this distance you're not going to see individual flowers, so it's just fields of color and it's fun to play with that. Okay, now I've had to use uh, my golden open uh, fluid acrylics. It's not, no, it's not an open, it's just a fluid acrylic, cadmium red, medium hue. And uh, we're going to apply it with a brush, I guess. It's pretty fierce. We'll maybe put it here at the foreground. Oh, it goes on pretty well. And it should print nicely, even though it's an acrylic paint. We're going to do a release coat once everything dries. So it should pick up everything. So there's this huge swath of... I'm just going to take it down with some of that violet, just because it's further in the background. And it, again, it's more just a swirl of color back here. That was what was so nice about the field. I actually want to do a plein air painting, but uh, right now the weather is so hot. Uh, we're sitting close to 40 degrees, I think, right? Yeah. Fahrenheit, yeah. Not Fahrenheit, <laughs> Celsius. <laughs> okay. And a little bit way up here. Just a little bit more of the reds. So what you can do is uh, um, it float some of the stuff into what you've done previously because it's still wet. So just to get more punch. some here in the foreground. And here you can probably see little individual spots just to give it that aerial perspective view. All right getting there. <laughs> so after this we have to let it dry. So what we're going to do is give you a musical and video interlude which we're starting to do and I think that works. It gives you the, um, the feeling that we are breaking and doing something else so that there's you know a bit of a time lapse and also a nice moment. <laughs> Okay, we're ready to print. Everything is dried. We've had our little break. Watered stuff a little bit. Got extremely hot. <laughs> and uh, we're just going to put a little white down. There. Oh, a little white. Yeah. <laughs> this is the Galleria uh, Windsor Newton Titanium White. Uh, good stuff. Galleria is not your top notch paint, but it's pretty good. And now we're just putting some. Amsterdam, um, what's this called? Light Rose. I just want to have a bit of a faint hue of, uh, you know, just a bit of a rose color rather than just a stark white in the background. 
and I'm rolling it out here. We'll just get that out of harm's way. Um, and you're activating the paint, but at the same time we're going to be wetting the paper, so it all should work. So less is more for this kind of layer. You're just activating the paint, the layer on the surface of the gel plate. Okay, let that sit for a second and we're going to spray this quick. And you could use printmaking paper for this. I'm just using my uh, Bian Fang um, drawing paper and hopefully all will be well. And we're going to let that sit. And this isn't like a transfer where you have to pull it as soon as you've got the first layer on your release coat. I'm just going to check See if we're picking anything up. Oh, we are. So it's not to worry. So we can get to the next stage here. Okay, so I have a heron drawing. Done this ahead of time already. Um, we're going to be using the uh, Graphite Pure uh, 2900 9B Faber Castell. And this is a nice heavy duty. And we're just going to redraw. Our little heron drawing that I've done previously. And I might just emphasize a few things more so that they print better. He's got funny legs and knobbly knees. Probably won't see much of the feet. And there's a tail. We're just going to emphasize that a bit more too. And these upper tail feathers. And a bit of the body. Here and and he's got sort of little fingers at the edge of his a little eagle like probably helping with flight since it's a really big bird. Let's see if we have everything. Just going to make a tiny X, make sure that I'm putting the right one down, put that aside for now. Okay, the big reveal. Okay. So we could enhance the trees a little bit more and I think that's what we'll do before we put the heron in. But just a maybe a tiny bit of color rather than more form because the heron's going to go on top of that as a graphite transfer. So let's just get some green and black down of that. And a little bit of a more distressed black here. We use the graphite pencil, of course, for the trees. And then I'm just going to use a brush to put it on. And we'll do it directly on the, on the print rather than on here. Just a little bit of emphasis. And this is all allowed. Your artwork, your way.
And what we'll do is we're just going to put it on the plate as a so that it gets that print quality. So it's just a little touch up. Give the feeling of forest. I'm just using a really big brush so that you don't get precious on this kind of thing. Always use the biggest brush you can find to do whatever needs doing. And These background trees are more gray than anything else. And maybe just a tiny bit more black. Okay. So we just want to get the feeling of that. Uh, and we'll take the red to that. That's good for now. And we have to figure out where to place our little drawing. The bird is large and it's going to be, if I'm printing it this way, this is down, right? Then uh, as a result, it's going to be in reverse going towards the forest, which is what I want. So that's why I put a little X. So you know that side goes down. And then you place it. Now, where do we want it? I was thinking in here where I've left the trees more dis indistinct. So that's going to be that side. Don't want it too close to the top. Okay. <laughs> Brayer on. So it's a nice way to use that uh, graphite to do some transfers. And look at how well it turns out. Now, hopefully that will... Okay, now we need a release coat on here. Um, again, I'm just going to use the pink, I think. And uh, just pink and white. And now in this case, we have to add a little bit of our uh, glazing, satin glazing because we don't want a lot of color obscuring everything. So a little bit of the pink, a little bit of the white. But it won't release unless you put a, a release coat on it. And then wipe away any ex excess you don't want so that doesn't show up in your print too much. You just want the bird and print. So here's a reveal. Um, it it gives the outline really well. I, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of detail. Here it is on the plate. I don't know if you I probably can't see it that well on there. Now all we're going to do is add some details with some brushwork. And it's back to our colors. The heron is blue. And so Just gonna bang that in here. You could probably use the crayon directly, but I think it would be a bit on the messy side. And then this one. And 
bit of the black. Now he has kind of a angled piece right there. And his legs with the knobbly knees. And the outline of those feathers. starts to come to life. Mixing it with a black a little bit to give it a little bit of darker tone. He's got an orange, orange beak. Well, it could be a, a she, right? <laughs> Elongate that feather. And then there's some white that we need to add. There's here a piece on the just by his eye. And those back feathers. That's close enough. It doesn't have to be such a great detailed bird, but enough to get the feeling. So it's flying back to its nest, probably full of food for its babies. And that's our field with Heron. So thanks for joining me today. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, these distress crayons are certainly very versatile. Um, be sure to try them out and uh, let me know uh, in some of the sites that we all go to, uh, like the Gelatin Printing Enthusiasts, and uh, you know, show me your work and it's fun to do. So take care of yourselves, don't forget to like and subscribe, and uh, bye for now. And thanks for watching. <laughs>